Hi, I'm Anahita, and this is my dad, Dr. Erna Bray. Today, I'm going to be interviewing him for his book, Cybersecurity for Connected Medical Devices. So. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, Anahita, for interviewing me. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Arna Bray, and I'm the author for Cybersecurity for Connected Medical Devices. Okay, so my first question is, so... To start with, what was the main inspiration behind the book? So, yeah, so what was the inspiration behind Sure. So when we were growing up, our library used to be full of reference books and textbooks. Um, and I've always wanted to write one of them because, you know, they're textbooks. Once you write it, once a reference book, you write it, that's it. Your name's there forever. Um, so, so far, for those of you who follow me as a nonfiction, as a fiction author writer, I've kind of dabbled in fiction, uh, but I've always wanted to write this one book, uh, which would be a reference or a textbook. So that was really the inspiration. It was something which I've always wanted to growing up. Okay, interesting. So what was the objective of the book? Of the book? So basically more like the message you were trying to mainly, con like the, mainly the message that you were trying to convey to the reader in the book, because every book has a message, even ones that are not fictional. Yes, absolutely. So there are multiple objectives uh, for writing this book. One was that I felt that a book like this did not exist. Well, there were there, there are books. I, I should correct myself, but uh, um, I wanted to write a book which was the kind of book that I would like to read in medical device cybersecurity. I also tell people when people ask me, why did you write this fiction book? I always tell them, well, this is exactly the kind of book that I like to read. It's the same thing. So in a way, the objective was always to write the kind of medical device cybersecurity book that I would have liked to read. So that was one thing. But the second larger objective is that um, I am in the healthcare industry. That's what I, that's, that's my job. And the healthcare industry is kind of the cybersecurity is not part, has not historically not been part of the organizational culture of healthcare and medical devices. And let me explain what that, what I mean by that. Um, so if you look at a bank, for instance, I'm pretty sure the first bank that ever came into existence was the first bank that was ever robbed. So uh, a lot of banks, insurance companies, they've always grown with this, uh, a presumption of an active adversary, that there's always somebody who's trying to harm them, um, you know, loot the money, defraud them in insurance, but healthcare has never been like that. It has always been, you know, people have an ailment, they go to the doctor, the doctor uses these medical devices to do therapy or to do diagnosis. And overall, it's always been an atmosphere of mutual trust. Why would anybody want to hack into such a system? Well, over the years, what's happened is that medical devices classically used to be essentially mechanical and electrical systems. But over the years, they've become more and more driven by software. Essentially, they're no different from your iPhone, for instance, nowadays. And just like an iPhone and just like your laptop, and they're also connected to the internet, they can be attacked. Um, so that means that an active adversary has become an intrinsic part of the business of healthcare. And my objective of the book is to make the industry understand that and to lay out certain engineering practices that would help uh, medical device manufacturers device and design secure medical devices. Okay, thank you, very, very interesting. So, um, so what's the main idea of the book? Sure. So the main idea is to kind of follow from uh, the answer to the last question. The main idea of the book is to build essentially, we have several chapters. Um, so it's to understand how to securely develop medical devices in the presence of an active adversary, which means how do you, for instance, model the threats or the attacks that can happen on a medical device? How do you assess the risk because in an ideal world we we can in ideal world you can make something which is absolutely secure nobody can do anything to it but that's never really happens because you have to take certain engineering decisions by that what i mean is that okay if i spent like a million zillion dollars to secure this device maybe i could make it very secure but i can't right you have to sell this device so there are a lot of practical considerations which go around what engineering is so this book kind of lays out 
what formally is known as threat modeling, what is known as risk assessment and risk modeling in the presence of cybersecurity threats. So these things I have tried to elaborate. One thing that I should mention, which is that in this day and age, who reads a book? Uh, I mean, technical topics, people go and they Google and they find online. Uh, there's places called Stack Exchange. They just go and find it. So why would you even read a book? My teacher literally says that you were born in a great time where you can just type in your question onto Google and it's called the internet. Absolutely. So when we grew up, there was nothing like this. So we had to read a book. Now for your generation, why I even have a book? So the question, so the, this is a good question. And the answer to it is that I, while writing this book, I have deliberately avoided repeating things that you can find much better written online. So it's only things which you cannot find readily online that I've written in the book and I've deferred to the net in terms of, and because cybersecurity is a moving target and everything keeps changing. It so developed like a absolutely. Short while ago. Yes, and there are new attacks coming out. There are new defenses being de designed. And when the attackers see those de defenses, they change their tactics. So it's always changing. That's what makes it so exciting. So in a way, you cannot cover all of that in a book. You start writing and it immediately becomes outdated. So what I've done is I've pointed people to resources where they can go and update themselves. What this book does is establishes some of the more foundational aspects of medical device cybersecurity engineering that you will not, at this at the time of writing, you won't find on the web. And so that's been kind of been one of the principles when you talked about the main idea of writing this book. Yeah, okay. So how long exactly have you been writing the book? Cause like every, like even when I was like six or five years old when we moved here in 2018, I, in early 2018, probably around the middle, you used to always climb up here into your room and you spent like, at least one, two hours, like play, writing down, the, spend your time writing up to from like, from when you came back from office and then until dinner time. So how long exactly, how long have you been writing this book? So the physical act of writing this book, more than three years. The ideas for the book I've been developing for years in my head. Which we'll get yes. to later. Sure, yes, so, um, but, and, and, the, and the reason why it took me so long time to write is that, first of all, while writing fiction, you are the source of truth, right? So whatever you write is correct. So that makes it much, it's, it's, it's a lot less stressful, I can say that. I can literally say flying hippopotamuses and that'll exist in my story. Exactly. So you define the world and that's it. That's your world. In this case, that is not true. So everything has to be grounded in fact, evidence citations, references. And on top of that, the thing about medical device cybersecurity is cybersecurity itself is a very evolving and fast changing field. Medical device cybersecurity, double that because it's a new field, regulations and standards are being written. So that makes it very dynamic. So the what the world was three years ago when I actually started putting the virtual pen to paper, it's very different from what it is now. So I've always had to kind of change the book as I have gone along. I have changed the way the chapters were written. Um, when I was writing chapter seven, for instance, I realized, well, I need to rewrite chapter three because a lot of things have changed. So I kept going back, back and back again. So it's taken much more time than I thought it would uh, take me when I started writing, but I would say that the book is much better for it. I'm glad that I spend and I invested those hours every evening that you saw me spending into writing this book. I'm, I'm glad that I did. Also, yeah. Also, I saw that you like spent for like several months working on just chapter seven. Yes, yes. So, it's, you know, that's the thing. You know, some some chapters, of course, took much more time to write. That's that's absolutely true. Okay, so um, question five, as I said, we would get to later when we're discussing the inspiration behind the book. That's the question. When did you get first get the idea to write a medical cybersecurity book? So the main thing is, I mean, we all start physically, you started physically typing the book three years ago, but I mean, didn't you get inspiration to write the book a long time ago? Like my story, The Little Bubble, I actually thought of the story, like it, it, I, it has been in my head for like months before it had been in my head for months before I physically wrote it. Yes. So yeah. Absolutely. So I got the 
like I've always, as I said, I've growing up, I always wanted to write a reference textbook. We used to call it textbook when growing up. Um, so in a way, I always wanted to write a book. Now, for those of you, again, who follow my fiction, you know that I, write, I like to write fiction in different genres. And what I say is I like to write the book that I would like to read. Now, one thing I realized over the years that I've been writing on topics that um, there's one topic that I've never written on, which is the topic that I do my, you know, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I feel, yeah, I've never written anything on it. I, and I you wondered why, day. yeah, and, and I wondered why. I, I mean, I, I, I dabble in different genres. Let me, let me dabble in this one for, for a change. So that was the idea that, but is there a book to be written? Should I even write a book? Is there a book which people need? You remember this test is, is this a book that I would like to read myself? And I realized that yes, there is a need for a medical device cybersecurity book at this point of time. Now, there are other medical device cybersecurity books, um, absolutely, but I felt that there was a gap in terms of what I would like to see in a medical device cybersecurity book, and that exactly is what I have written in this book. You said that earlier that when you search on Google, you can't exactly just find everything you want to on cybersecurity. There are blank spots that medical wanna, device cybersecurity. Yeah, ma medical device cybersecurity that you want to fill in in your book, although it's always developing. Like even like when you search literally anything on Google, first on my tab, the first results I get are on websites and the articles go on forever and forever and forever. And then when I get to the end of it, I realize it has absolutely nothing to do with, with what I asked. Absolutely. So there are a lot of false positives in Google. You think that you'll find something and you never find it. So again, the, this book is focused usually on, mostly on things that you will not find on Google. Now, there's one thing that I should mention over here, uh, which is res with, with respect to um, some of the assumptions that I have in terms of, and maybe you would come to that later on and maybe we would we'll cover that in detail. But one thing that I do is I think people might be thinking, how much core cybersecurity is there in this book? And again, there are other good, very good, books on foundational mathematical aspects of cybersecurity that I encourage people to read. My intention has never been to reinvent the wheel. That's exactly one of the things. If you're writing a book, then don't repeat what somebody else has written in different language. For me, that's not interesting to read. It's not interesting for me to write. So everything in this book, pretty much most of it is stuff that you will not find it anywhere. Um, now, the stuff you'll find elsewhere, the foundational aspects of the book, uh, the foundational security concepts that people need to have, I have gone over them. I've provided an overview in chapter two, but I wouldn't say that if you've never read it before, you can just go and read those three pages and boom, at the end of three pages, you're a cybersecurity expert. Now, that doesn't happen, right? So it's the unrealistic. So that is only there for people who have read it before, maybe a few years ago. It is just a very fast refresher. Again, there are a lot of citations. So if you want to go and read in detail, you're absolutely free to do so. Like when I play piano, I I had absolutely no experience playing it. I self-taught myself, kind of, using YouTube and stuff. But then when I searched on YouTube, the top results, I just used those. And then I realized those were for people who had at least one year of piano <laughs> experience, but there were no videos for beginners until I found Sure. So, um, so six question. We're getting to the end, but as an author, uh, you a lot of people probably think that once they publish a book, they think they've done the best that they've ever done, and that they that they can do so far. But like, and everybody like has different reviews and everything. But how? Do you, as the author, feel how well do you think you wrote the book? So for me, just like you, every book of mine is like a child of mine. So obviously I, I am attached to it and I cannot be objective about it. I, I won't even pretend that I'm objective about my books. So uh, do I think I did a good job? Absolutely, because I'm not objective. So, you know, take it as, as, as you wish when I say that. However, what I, what I, what I do is, this is the best book that I could have written. Okay. So that's that, that I can take that this is the best book that I could have written. I spent in a, spent a lot of time in it, revising, re-revising. I had it 
edited, read by independent eyes who came from a very different perspective than I did, so that it does just, just isn't me, is that it's not understandable to anybody else. It's only a book that I've written and only I can understand. So I deliberately took steps to ensure that is not the case. So in terms of whether the book is good or not, I will leave, leave it for the audience and for the general community. But this is definitely the best that I could have written. That, that, I, can, that I can say. And our final question, exactly, there are many people in the world, they all have their, their likings and people and dislikings. So what type of a person would you recommend this to? So this book is again, it's very obvious it's for people in the medical device and healthcare industry. So that's one thing. Um, there, is, there are of course books for general computer security. Um, this is not a book for general that audience, there are other very good books, some of which I cite in my book. Uh, so this presumes that you are in the medical device industry. You have some uh, understanding of cybersecurity, not all the chapters. So in the chapters, I also start off by saying this chapter is for these kinds of people with this kind of background. So it's written for, you know, it's, it's, for a, it's a multi-stakeholder book. So it's written for people who want to hire for medical device cybersecurity, so human resource professionals. It's written for the actual cybersecurity engineers who will develop the cybersecurity requirements and design for the product. That's definitely there. It's written for executive management, that is people who will decide how much to spend on cybersecurity. There are chapters for them too. Then there are chapters for quality engineers who kind of provide oversight and third party independent verification and validation written for them. And it's also written for those who create regulatory submissions. So let me explain what this means. So one of the challenges of working in the healthcare industry is it's a regulated industry, which means that you not only have to make great products that sell and which provide benefit to patients, you also have to convince uh, government regulators and customers that, you know, these products are good products. So unlike, let's say, iPhone, um, when Apple releases a phone, they sell directly to the customers. They don't have to prove formally that their phone does anything. I mean, they, there are some things that they do, but it's not a regulated industry. The medical device field is a regulated industry. For cybersecurity, it's not just enough to make your devices secure. It is also important to be able to prove to somebody who is a skeptic that the device is secure. So these are related, but two different problems. So this book also handles the design part, but it also handles the assurance part. So it handles both. So there is a lot of meat there for people who, you know, do that kind of regulatory work. So summing up, it's for engineers. It's for engineers who do the product design. It's for quality engineers. It's for people in the regulatory space. It's for HR professionals. And it's also for executive management in healthcare and medical device manufacturing business who want to understand what the lay of the land is, what they should do in order to create, coming back to one of the previous questions, a cybersecurity culture in their organizations. All right, uh, before we just end this, is there any last uh, details or any last thing that you wanna add? Sure, so first of all, I would like to thank you for conducting this interview. And I would also uh, like to thank those of you who watched this video. And I strongly, strongly encourage those of you who are in the medical device industry or interested in this to go and buy the book. Exactly. Bye-bye.